So at this point, we've actually gotten all of our zeros. If we think about our list of zeros in uh, that we came up with already, we had the conjugate roots theorem tell us 2 plus i and 2 minus i are both zeros, and now we have our last two. So put those in green again, maybe. So our list of all of our zeros, 2 plus i, 2 minus i, which we saw in our first two factors up here, and now we have negative 1 plus 2i and negative 1 minus 2i. So if you graphed this, it actually would have no zeros. Uh, I don't know, it looks like it'd probably be all above the x-axis. There'd be no real zeros um, at all, but there are four complex zeros. So our last two factors, if we wanted to put them in here, would be x minus negative 1 plus 2i, and x minus negative 1 minus 2i. Cool. So, uh, tough problem. The next ones aren't so tough. Um, the last three we come to will be kind of like this, except they're, they aren't all complex numbers. So this one was tough because they were all complex. So let's take a look at the next problem. How many zeros does this function have? Well, fundamental theorem of algebra tells us that if the degree is 9, there are 9 zeros. Okay? A lot of those will be complex because there's an i in here involved. Um, so not and very many real zeros. In fact, we're going to find out right now how many there are. So how many of those zeros are real? Well, notice that this shares in common an r. So I can pull an r out. So I have r times 6r to the 8th minus i. So now think about this. Uh, for sure, one zero we have, these are factors, right? So r is a factor, and so is 6r to the 8th minus i. So if r is a factor, then r equals 0 is for sure, for sure a 0. So r equals 0 is one of our roots, or our zeros, or our x-intercepts. Root, singular, because it's just 0. Um, and so we know that there's at least one real 0. Now the rest of them, think about this. We're doing 6 times r to the 8th, and they have to equal i to make this 0. We would have to have 6r to the 8th is equal to i. Well, there is no real number that you can take to the 8th power and multiply by 6 that will give you i, because every real number that you put in here for r will give you a real number. So all the rest of those must be imaginary. So there are 8 complex roots. So there is just one that's real, and that's zero, and then there are eight complex ones, because they have to give you an i somehow. And the only way you can take something to the eighth power that gives you an i is if they're complex to start with. So a little bit of a conceptual idea there, but not too bad. OK, so true or false? Those are fun. So let's see here. We have 2 minus 3i. They tell us it's a 0 of this polynomial, x cubed minus 3x squared plus 9x plus 13. Well, fundamental theorem of algebra tells us that because this is a cubic, there are three zeros, counting multiplicities. Okay, So we know there are three zeros. And they tell us 2 minus 3i is one of the zeros. This has real coefficients, so conjugate roots theorem applies. So if we make a list of our zeros, we know 2 minus 3i is a 0. Conjugate roots theorem tells us 2 plus 3i must be a 0. So we already have 2. So we only have one more 0 left. Well, think about it this way. If it was 3 minus 2i, because these are real coefficients again, what would also have to be a 0? 3 plus 2i. But we only have room for one more. So 3 minus 2i cannot be a 0. So this is true. Because that last one is going to have to be a real number. It can't be a complex number. If it were, then we would have a fourth, and it's only a degree 3 polynomial. So that can't be a 0, because we can't have these two. We can only get one more. That wasn't too bad. It is possible for the graph of a third degree polynomial with real coefficients to intersect the line y equals negative 5 exactly twice. So this is getting back to the wiggliness theorem. So remember the wiggliness theorem told us that if you have a function like this that crosses a horizontal line a certain number of times, this crosses once, twice, three, four times, so that degree has to be at least four. So here we have a third degree polynomial, so some kind of x cubed plus a bunch of other stuff maybe. But if we think about the line y equals negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right there. So they're saying, is it possible that it crosses exactly twice? Well, what the wiggliness theorem says is that um, if it crosses two times, the degree would have to be at least 2. This is a third degree. So we should be able to make a third degree polynomial that crosses or touches that line twice. So what I would suggest is we can't, if it was, if it was like a regular cubic, that goes through one, two, three times. Is it possible to move this up or down until it just touches twice? I think we can. What if we did this? So let's say this is our negative 5. If we just scooted it up until this guy just touches that line. So it looks something like this. So it would touch, go up, and then back down. Now it touches once, two times. So this over here would be like a single root. right? We talked about multiplicities on Friday. This guy over here would be a 
double root. So we have a single and a double, but because it just bounces there, I mean, it's, it's weird to think about these as roots because they don't go through the actual axis. But it's still, you can think about it as being a, like a root if you had, were to move it up by 5. So this negative 5 down here, it is possible to cross it exactly twice or to touch it exactly twice. Yeah, so that one is true. So both of them were true. It's possible to touch that exactly twice. Okay, so now for these, this is where we're really going to get into using some synthetic and uh, long division and being able to uh, find some zeros by graphing. So they tell, tell us to first graph it to find all the real zeros, and then we're going to have to factor it to find the non-real zeros. So I went ahead and graphed this on my Inspire, and you can do the same. And we have it right here. So this is what this graph looks like, x cubed minus 6x squared plus 13x minus 10. It looks like it has exactly one zero right there at 2. So we're going to make a list of our zeros. Right now, I know that 2 is a 0, so I'm missing two of them, and they're going to be complex because we don't show up on our graph. So at this point, I know f of x is equal to x minus 2 multiplied by some other quotient. And to find that, I'm going to divide. So I'm just going to divide f of x by that x minus 2, and it's going to give me, it should give me a quadratic over here. And we're going to have to use quadratic formula to be able to find those last two zeros. So um, I've got it set up again on the next page. So we got f of x here. We know it's x minus 2 times something. And you know what? I'm going to use synthetic division because it's just, I'm going to divide by x minus 2. To find that something, I'm going to divide. So I'll do f of x over x minus 2, and I'm just going to use synthetic division. So 2 goes into the box. We have 1, negative 6, 13, and 10. Draw our line. 1 comes down, times 2 is 2, plus negative 6, negative 4, negative 8, 5, 10. Uh, sorry, uh, what did I do? Negative 2 times, hmm, what did I do? 2, negative 4, negative 8, 5. Oh, it's negative 10. <laughs> Fransky. All right, so we have 10 here, and we add them together. It gives us a 0. So at this point, I know that this thing right here is this polynomial. It's x squared minus 4x plus 5. I'm just gonna, even going to put it in the parentheses, because we know that that's what it is. It's x squared minus 4x plus 5. Now, we could use the, um, the quadratic formula to find those last two factors, because really what I want is I want f of x equals x minus 2. I want to know what those last two zeros are. So to find those, we would have to factor this. But we can't factor this because it looks like we can. It's tempting to do x, maybe minus 5, x plus 1. That would give us the negative 4x, but negative 5 times 1 is negative 5. So that's not going to work. This actually is going to give us complex roots. We know that because we didn't have any other zeros on the graph. So the complex roots here, we could find by using quadratic formula. But actually, if you look back a few problems, so I have to go back quite a ways here. Doo -doo -doo. Here we are. So we actually saw that um, this, uh, where is it, x squared minus 4x plus 5, that came from 2 plus i and 2 minus i. So I'm just going to grab those. So 2 plus i and 2 minus i are our last zeros. So 2 plus i, so we make our zeros list again. We have 2, 2 plus i, and 2 minus i. Because the factoring of this we saw from a problem before is, we need some more space here, x minus 2 plus i times x minus 2 minus i. And that's it. So again, you could use quadratic formula here. I might as well just show it. Negative b plus or minus square root b squared, which is 16, minus 4ac. That's 20, all over 2a, which is 2. So that's 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 4, which is 2i, over 2 which is 2 plus and minus i. Okay, So I kind of stole this from a previous problem. I just wanted to show that the quadratic formula does work there. So we have our zeros, and that's all they asked us to do. Factor f of x to determine all non-real zeros. So here's our factoring, and here are our non-real zeros. All right, moving on. So here we have our function, and it's going to do the same thing. So first we graph it. And this is an interesting one because it looks like it bounces off right there at 2. So we might have a double root there at x equals 2. And we can actually even kind of prove it because if it's a fourth degree, if we make our zeros list, make our zeros list here, then we know that 2 has to be a 0. But it, when we get a complex root, so this first one's going to be complex, 
then we have to get another one that's the complex conjugate. So we have those two complex roots. I can't have a third complex zero, because then I would get a, uh, uh, another zero, which would mean I would have five in total. So I have to have another real one, and since it bounces off there, it looks like two is a double root. So sometimes you'll see people list two twice so that you really see that there's four. But to find those complex roots, I'm going to have to do some long division. There's some uh, synthetic division here. So right now I know f of x is x minus 2 twice. So I could write it as squared, and there's going to be something left. Or you could write f of x equals x minus 2 times x minus 2 times whatever's left. So I'm going to have to divide by x minus 2, and then divide by x minus 2 again in order to find out what that resulting polynomial is. You could also do what we did at the beginning. You could multiply these two together, which would give you x squared minus 4x plus 4 and then do long division to get that number. I'll let you try that on your own if you want to, but I'm going to do it with synthetic division. So we have our f of x here, and I know it's x minus 2 times x minus 2 times some other polynomial. So to find that, I'm going to do synthetic division twice. So I'll put 2 into the box. I've got 1, negative 6, 14, uh, negative 16, and then 8. Draw our line. 1 comes down, times 2 is 2, negative 6 or negative 4, negative 8 and 14 are 6, times 2 is 12, gives me a negative 4, negative 8 gives me 0. So at this point, I've only divided by x minus 2 one time. I haven't done this second x minus 2 yet. So right now, I have f of x equals x minus 2 times this resulting cubic, x cubed minus 4x squared plus 6x minus 4. That's where I'm at right now. But I can still pull another x minus 2 out of this guy. So I'll just put another 2 in the box, and I'll use this guy. So 1 comes down, times 2 is 2, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, gives me a 2, times 2 is 4, gives me 0. So now I've pulled out that second x minus 2 out of this guy. There's an x minus 2 factored in here that I can pull out. So now I have f of x is x minus 2 times x minus 2 times x squared minus 2x plus 2. Right. So now this guy, once again, can't factor that. Going to have to use quadratic formula. So if I think about my zeros list, I have 2 and then 2 again, because that was my double root. And now I need to figure out what the factors are hiding in here. So I do negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, which is 8, all over 2a, which is just 2. So we have 2 plus or minus. This is the square root of negative 4, which is 2i over 2, so that's 1 plus or minus i. So my zeros are 2, which is a double root, and then 1 plus i, and 1 minus i. So if I were to put these in factored form, I would have f of x equal to x minus 2, x minus 2, x minus parentheses 1 plus i, and x minus parentheses 1 minus i. Because now if I put any of those four zeros in for x, it'll cancel out. 2 will cancel out here or here. If I put 1 plus i right here, then I subtract it, it's gone. And 1 minus i right here and subtract it, it's gone. So we found all the zeros. One more. So once again, we have a function here. We're going to graph it. I've got the graph right here. So um, if we look at our graph here, it looks like our zeros are negative 3 negative 2, and negative 1. So I'll start a zeros list. Zeros, negative 3, negative 2, and negative 1. But fundamental theorem of algebra says since it's a degree 5 polynomial, there have to be 5 zeros. So we must be missing two complex zeros. So if I were to start factoring this, I have f of x is x plus 3, x plus 2, x plus 1. And then I'm missing something else here that's probably going to be a quadratic. So once I factor that, it'll be able to give me two uh, more factors that are probably going to be complex. In fact, they have to be, because I have these guys right here that are just my three real zeros. And then I'll have my completely factored form. So let's see here. So we have plus 3, plus 2, and plus 1. So this is x plus 3, x plus 2, x plus 1, and I'm looking for the last quadratic here. And I'll fill that in after I find it. So once again, you could multiply these to get x squared plus 5x plus 6, then take that, multiply by x plus 1 to get a cubic polynomial, and do long division. I'm going to choose to do synthetic division 1, 2, 3 times, just because it's going to be faster. So I'll put negative 3 into the box, because we're dividing by x plus 3. And then I have 1, 10, 41, I'm getting big here, 86, 
90 and 36. But we should get 0 for a remainder because it's a factor. And negative 3 is a 0. So 1 comes down times negative 3 is negative 3. That gives me 7. Times negative 3 is negative 21. Gives me 20. Times negative 3 is negative 60. Looks like, uh, gosh, 26. Times negative 3 is negative 60 and negative 18. That's negative 78. Sheesh. That gives me a positive 12. Oh, good. Times negative 3 is negative 36. So, and add those together gives me 0. So at this point, I have f of x is equal to x plus 3, because all I've done is divided by x plus 3, times x to the fourth plus 7x cubed plus 20x squared plus 26x plus 12. But there's still an x plus 2 and an x plus 1 hiding in here that I have to pull out. So let's just use those same coefficients with a negative 2. So negative 2 is coming now, so 1 comes down, times negative 2 is negative 2, times 7 is, or, sorry, plus 7 is 5, times negative 2 is negative 10, gives me a 10 here, times negative 2 is negative 20, that gives me 6, times 2 negative 2 is negative 12, that gives me a 0 remainder. So at this point I have f of x equal to x plus 3, x plus 2, and now what I have left is x cubed plus 5x squared plus 10x plus 6. And what's still hiding in there, in that x cubic, in the cubic polynomial? I still have a plus 1, an x plus 1 hiding in there that I can pull out. And uh, something to note here, you could do this in any order. If you did x plus 1 first, and then did x plus 3, and then x plus 2, it doesn't matter. You can do it in any order, it's going to end up giving you the same answer. The intermediate polynomials here would be different, but you'd end up with the same thing. So we're going to throw a negative 1 into the box. 1 comes down, negative 1, 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, gives me a uh, positive 6, negative 6, and a 0. So, excellent. Now we have f of x is x plus 3, x plus 2, x plus 1, and now we're left with this quadratic, x squared plus 4x plus 6. And the goal is to get a quadratic, because then we can use quadratic formula, or maybe if we're lucky we can factor, but in this case we can't. So that was what we were trying to find, was that x squared plus 4x plus 6. And now we're going to use quadratic formula to find out what the zeros actually are. So we have our zero list over here. Uh, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. We're looking for those two complex ones. So let's see what we've got. So uh, if we use quadratic formula on this last quadratic uh, polynomial here, we'll have negative 4 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 16, minus 4ac. Well, that looks like it's negative 24, so minus 24 all over 2 times a, which is just 2. So, we simplify that. Looks like negative 4, ooh, yuck, plus or minus the square root of negative 8. No, that's not fun. All over 2. So, root negative 8, there's going to be an i there for sure, and I can also pull a 4 out of that. So the square root of 8, that's the square root of 4 times the square root of 2, which is the 2 times the square root of 2. So we have here negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2, and the root negative 8 is going to be a 2i root 2, and the 2's will cancel, so it'll be plus or minus i root 2. Ugh. So those are our last zeros. We have negative 2 plus i root 2, and negative 2 minus i root 2. Complete factorization, f of x is x plus 3, x plus 2, x plus 1, and then we would have x minus negative 2 plus i root 2, and x minus negative 2 minus i root 2. And that is our complete factorization. And I think that was the last problem. So hopefully this was uh, helpful for you guys. Um, if you need to go back and look through some of the work that I did on any given problem, that'd be a good idea. Uh, so altogether, it looks like this took me about a half hour to do. Um, and I know that might be longer than some of the other homework assignments have taken you, but you, you got to practice this stuff. You have to try it. Um, so if you have any questions, please let me know. And uh, if you watched this in class while I was gone, I will see you guys back here. Uh, when I get back, I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.